Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the filters that Inkscape has to offer. There are many filters and they're pretty powerful. They can do some cool things, uh, but you have to know how to use them, when to use them. And so I'm just gonna introduce them to you. I would recommend that you draw something similar to what I've done here. So I just drew a few rectangles, some different shapes, some text, a little gradient on white. I'm gonna be left clicking and selecting all of this and then applying filters to it to kind of get an idea for what the filters do. So I'd recommend that you do the same thing. Go through every single one of these filters and learn what they do. Um, so first I'm going to show you a couple that I like. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them by any means. But this one here, Ridged Border, is pretty cool. It gives a ridged border to uh, whatever object we have. And so we can see a nice little ridge there. It kind of creates a 3D shadow. So maybe I don't know, this could be kind of cool for something. Uh, control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. I moved that, I forgot. Okay, so now I'll go back to before I applied that, and I'll show you some of these other ones. Uh, so under blurs, I actually don't use blurs because what I like to do with a, the way I like to accomplish a blur is I'll go to my fill and stroke, and I'll just use this blur here. I, I'd rather do this than apply like a filter blur. So I like to do all my blurs that way rather than applying a filter. When the filter is applied, I'll show you in this next part, it's actually, the object still has its properties. So if we go to um, bumps here and we go bubbly bumps, it kind of just applies these bumps. We can zoom in a little bit and see if I hit the plus key. So we got these bumps, this texture in, and these where it was a straight line, it looks almost like it's clay or Play-Doh or wax merging into each other. But we still have our separate box, and we can kind of move it around if I do Control Z. And if I double click very quickly, we can still apply a rounded corner to this, for example. So you see it's not a path, it's still an object, like our circle. We can still make it the Pac-Man, even though it has this filter applied which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and then if we want to change the settings of this, so this sun looks pretty cool. Look at that, it's almost like a paint, like a wet paint. If we go to these filters and go down to Filter Editor, we have these options come up here. So we have all these options for this filter. We can actually change, so if we go up here, we can change how it's applied so it's more wet there and kind of inky towards the outside or we can go down and change different settings for how this appears. So every time we apply a filter, there's gonna be options. If we want to get rid of this filter, so we applied it to all these objects together. If we wanna take it off of just say the text, we select the text, go to filter, and go to remove filter, and then it's gone. And if we wanna, I can do control, shift, Z to reapply that. Or wait, how do you do redo? Edit, we go to, oh, it's not letting me redo it. But I can go to filter and just reapply that again. We go to bumps, we go to uh, bubbly bumps, I think is what we did. And then I just want to show that we can actually edit this text here um, as well. So just because a filter is applied doesn't mean like in, um, I guess I, I bring that up because in Photoshop sometimes or GIMP, when you apply a filter, sometimes if you don't do it correctly, you can't always go back and edit uh, the object b below that's being filtered. Uh, all right, so I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times. We're going to go back before a lot of this stuff was applied. And let's hit the minus key to zoom out a little bit. And I'll select all of these and show you some of the filters. I left myself some notes so I can show you what I want to. Um, there's a paper bump under this one. We can do paper bump. So we go to bumps. Uh, paper was pretty cool. So that applies sort of like this looking texture. I'll undo that. What else do we have here? Um, thick paint and then distort chalk. So we, let's do filter, bump. We've got thick paint somewhere here. Yeah. So that creates that kind of look. All right. And then these are all kind of by different sides. So we looked at the bevels first. That's We created kind of like button looking things. We can apply this button and create actual buttons. Like if you want to do a user interface. I, there's a better way to create buttons, actually, we'll do in a future tutorial. Uh, colors we're going to skip. Let's go to Distort, though. This Chalk and Sponge is cool. So this one, we'll want to change the settings on it. I think we have to do it you know, individually. So we'll change this down, change this base frequency. But it it's kind of creates the look of getting a sponge and then dipping it in, like, pressing it in Chalk. 
and changing things that way. Oh, I crashed it. I had too many, too many things going at once. So I'll just draw a few. What I really, what I really want to do is this that paper one that looks pretty cool. So if we just do this like a white like that, we'll just look at it. We'll look at the rest of these with just these two. Oh, delete. We'll get some text in here also. TJ free. Okay, zoom in here. So now we'll take all these and let's apply some other filters here. So we've got distort. We did we did that one. Uh, we're gonna skip a couple. So on materials, we can create like a a 3D wood. So that our white especially is gonna look like a kind of a 3D wood. And you see it's a little bit um, graphics intensive. And again, you'll want to keep in mind what you're what you're trying to do with these filters or what, with what you create. So if you're doing 3D wood, for example, and you want to create a vinyl to put over top of like glass on the back of your car, you can't print 3D wood on a vinyl printer. You have to keep more simple shapes. So depending on where you're going to be displaying this artwork or how you're going to be producing it, you may or may not want to apply uh, extravagant filters like these material ones. Um, we've got like leopard skin or lizard skin. It's kind of a cool one here. I mean, I really like this one. Look at the effect that it does to this star thing. And it's really, it's got this texture on it. So if we zoom in, it's got this really textured look, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll zoom out. Uh, what else? And it makes our text look pretty cool too. Let's select, let's control Z, select everything. Uh, there's a few, what else do I want to do? Overlays is pretty cool. So overlays, if we go do like cloud, a cloud overlay gives us sort of a cloudy look. Control Z. Um, there's another one that's kind of cloudy looking on the overlays uh, that's called Scotland. Create some cloud looks too. So if you want to create some clouds in the sky, you can kind of do this. And then again, we can come back and individually change um, you know, how thick the clouds are or how they appear uh, on here. I'll zoom out, hit Control Z. Ah. Yeah, I think what I'm doing, uh, I'm trying to zoom out on my image, why it keeps crashing, but I have my effects um, selected. And so what I'm actually hitting is the minus key and it's just putting a number in there that it just can't handle. So I apologize about that. Let's grab a few of these things, keep resetting this up. Uh, I'll just show you one more. I think you're getting the idea, I keep crashing. Okay, frost was cool though. So let's just take this, we'll apply frost to this one. So we go to filters, overlays, Frost is awesome. So Frost just gives us a cool little frosty looking background. Really cool, I think. We probably wouldn't want to, we can take the border off of this. So I'll do shift, no stroke. And then we just have this frosty looking background. which would be really cool for like a winter, like a, put a, a wedding announcement or have it just be the background of some announcement like 50% off sale or something like that. I think this Frost one looks pretty awesome. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, one more, and then we'll be done with this video. Let's look at, um, so texture, okay, we'll do texture burst. So we go to texture, filtered, all the way down to textures, and we go to burst. So this one's cool, especially if you have other objects next to it, because then it's, this is kind of more that paint Play-Doh look where it all mixes in. And we can change the color on this too, because it's an object. We can go ahead and change the color. We can even apply like a gradient into this and just make it look pretty neat, I think. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this. But again, it is, it's going to be more intensive because it's doing a lot of processing. It's not pixel art. It's, it's applying a filter to vector. So it can be a little more intensive. But it really just makes you think. It makes me think anyway. There's a lot of different ways. There's more than one way that to accomplish anything in Inkscape. So you can accomplish this look by uh, in by applying a, many different filters and there's just a lot of different ways to do things. So get familiar with these filters and you can create some really, really cool things. Appreciate you watching this video. Catch you in the next one. Go ahead and comment below and tell me how you like to use filters. I'm super curious to learn, um, you know, different ways to apply these. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.